Hello everyone. So um, this time I've got the maternal collapse guideline summarized for you. This is a green top guideline that's quite a long uh, detailed guideline. Um, so having this summarized is definitely handy. These are my revision notes from when I revised um, for the exam, which I'm sharing with you. I hope you'll find them useful. And if you do find them useful, then please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And leave a comment uh, below if you found this video useful. So maternal collapse is an acute event. Uh, it usually involves the cardiorespiratory system with or without the central nervous system. It results in a reduced or absent conscious level. It um, is, you know, we were talking about if a collapse happens in pregnancy and up to six weeks postnatally. Incidence of cardiac arrest is one in 36,000 maternities. The fatality rate is quite high. It's about 42%. An ABCD approach should be used in identifying the cause of the collapse and acting on it. So ABCDE, um, as you probably all know, stands for airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and then exposure. Okay, so first cause of um, a maternal collapse is hemorrhage. Incidence is six in a thousand. Causes are postpartum hemorrhage, um, antepartum hemorrhage from placenta previa, placental abruption, uterine rupture, concealed hemorrhage, say following a cesarean section or ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Other rare, rare causes of hemorrhage include splenic artery rupture and hepatic rupture. Delivery promptly um, helps in managing uh, some of the massive hemorrhages and may also need uh, to deliver via cesarean section. IV, so that's intravenous, tranexamic acid reduces mortality um, due to postpartum hemorrhage. Next cause is thromboembolism. Um, Embrace UK 2016 reported three deaths from thromboembolism, most common cause of direct maternal death. Next um, is amniotic fluid embolism. So in 2016, um, incidence was 1.7 per 100,000 maternities. Um, it's, it can present as a collapse during labour or birth or within 30 minutes of birth. It can present as acute hypertension, respiratory distress, and acute hypoxia, also sometimes as seizures or cardiac arrest. If obviously the mother is still pregnant, fetal distress can also develop quite acutely. Cardiac disease, the most common overall cause of indirect maternal death in the Embrace UK report of 2016. Main cardiac causes of maternal death are ischemia and sudden arrhythmic um, cardiac death with a structurally normal heart. Aortic root dissection is associated with inherited arteriopathy, um, such as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Mechanical prosthetic heart wells have increased risk of complications in pregnancy. Sepsis, most common organisms in obstetric sepsis are your streptococcal group A, B and D, pneumococcus and E. coli. Drug toxicity and overdose. So the antidote to magnesium toxicity is 10 mils of 10% calcium gluconate or 10 mils of 10% calcium chloride given by slow IV injection. Local anesthetic toxicity, um, again, the, the, what you should be giving, uh, firstly, you should, be stop, you should stop injecting the local anesthetic straight away and you should, be giving, you should give intralipid 20%. So eclampsia, if, it, uh, if, if a patient is over 20 weeks pregnant and they have a seizure, the first thought um, should be uh, eclampsia in terms of differentials could also be um, epilepsy um, and these patients will need urgent inpatient treatment. Intracranial hemorrhage is, is, is seen in uncontrolled, especially systolic uh, high blood pressure, but it can also happen from ruptured aneurysms and arteriovenous malformations. Neuroradiologists and neurosurgeons should be involved at the earliest opportunity in managing pregnant patients with intracranial hemorrhage. 
These are all the causes of um, maternal collapse. Anaphylaxis, again, one of the other causes. So a mast, a mast cell tryptase levels can be used in confirming the diagnosis. Potential causative agents should be removed. ABCD approach should be used in assessing and resuscitating uh, the patient. Um, the treatment is one in 1,000 adrenaline, that's 500 micrograms, 0.5 mils, given IM. Adrenaline can be repeated every five minutes. If there's no effect, chlorophenamine, 10 milligrams, and hydrocortisone, 200 milligrams, both should be given IM or by slow IV injection. Okay, the incidence of severe peri, uh, perioperative obstetric anaphylaxis is between 1 and 3.5 per 100,000 with a mortality rate of approximately 1%. The three criteria that are required for anaphylaxis are sudden onset and rapid progression of symptoms, life-threatening airway and or breathing and or circulation problems, skin and or mucosal changes like flushing, urticaria and geodema. Other causes of collapse include hyperglycemia, hypernatremia, other metabolic and electrolyte disturbances, causes of hypoxia like AV obstruction, secondary to aspiration or, for, or, or foreign body, air embolism, tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, secondary trauma or dissection and hypothermia, local anesthetic toxicity or failed tracheal intubation. So this is quite a useful um, a picture because it goes through your four H's and your four T's, which are absolutely essential for, for you to know, not just for the exams, but also for your practical life as a doctor. So four H's stand for your um, hypervolemia, hypoxia, hypo, hyperkalemia and hyponatremia, hypothermia um, and the four T's stand for thromboembolism, toxicity, tension pneumothorax, tamponade. There's also an additional one as eclampsia and preeclampsia for the pregnancy. I'll give you just a few seconds to look over this yourself. Okay, so physiological and physical changes in pregnancy. Um, so the, for the cardiovascular system, the plasma volume increases by up to 50%. Heart rate increases by 15 to 20 beats per minute. Cardiac output is increased by 40%. Uterine blood flow is 10% of the cardiac output at term. Um, systemic vascular resistance is decreased. Arterial blood pressure uh, is decreased by 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury. Venous return is decreased by pressure of the gravid uterus on the inferior vena cava. In the respiratory system, the respiratory rate is increased. Oxygen consumption is increased by 20%. Residual capacity is decreased by 25%. Arterial um, CO2 is also decreased. Laryngeal edema is increased. Other changes like gastric mortality is decreased. Lower esophageal sphincter is relaxed. Uterus is enlarged and weight increases. The second, uh, obviously, a part of this uh, table goes through the impact on resuscitation, which I think is quite important uh, for you to know for practical purposes. Um, so please um, give yourself a few seconds to look over this. Right, so changes in pregnancy. So aortocaval compression significantly reduces cardiac output from 20 weeks of gestation and the efficacy of chest compressions is therefore reduced. From around 20 weeks gestation onwards, the gravid uterus reduces venous return. In the supine position, cardiac output is reduced by 30 to 40 percent. Changes in lung function, diaphragmatic uh, splinting and increased oxygen consumption make pregnant women become more hypoxic more readily and make ventilation more difficult. The increased progesterone level in pregnancy increases the respiratory drive, leading to an increase in tidal volume and, my, and minute ventilation. Weight gain in pregnancy, large breasts inhibit the working space and laryngeal edema all make intubation very difficult. High risk of regurgitation and aspiration secondary to the progesterone effect, relaxing the lower esophageal sphincter 
along with the raised intra-abdominal pressure second, secondary to the gravid uterus. Uterus receives 10% of the cardiac uplift term, so, um, so tolerate blood loss remarkably well, uh, most pregnant patients, and can lose up to 35% of their circulation before becoming symptomatic. Often internal tachycardia may be the only sign of hypervolemia. So outcomes for mothers and babies, uh, so it depends on the cause of collapse, gestation age, access to emergency care, with survival rates being poorer if the collapse uh, occurs outside, outside of the hospital. In maternal cardiac arrest, uh, maternal survival rates of over 50% have been reported. Um, the airway in pregnancy is more vulnerable because of the increased risk of regurgitation and aspiration. Supplemental high flow oxygen should be administered as soon as possible to counteract rapid deoxygenation. Bag and mask ventilation or insertion of a simple supraglottic supra airway should be undertaken until intubation can be achieved. So 30 chest compression should be aimed for for every two ventilation breaths. Um, ventilation rate of 10 breaths per minute with continuous card chest compressions of 100 to 120 um, per minute should be achieved during um, resuscitation. So, so at the time of arrest or maternal collapse, the general arrest team should be called, the senior midwife, the, senior, the obstetrician and obstetric anesthetist. Um, most senior obstetrician and senior anesthetists should be called should be called at the time of a uh, cardiac arrest. Um, the natal team should be called if there is uh, delivery is likely and and the and the, and the patient's over twenty two weeks pregnant. Um, consultant inten, um, in, in, intensivist should be involved if the if the mother survives. Greater than twenty two weeks of gestation, if there's no response to CPR within four minutes of collapse, then uh, perimortem cesarean section should be undertaken to assist maternal resuscitation, ideally achieved within five minutes of collapse. Perimortem uh, cesarean section should be delayed by uh, should not be delayed by moving the women, so it should be carried out there and then. Midline vertical incision or a super suprapubic transverse incision should be um, should be uh, used, and that should be decided uh, by the operator based on what will give quick access to the uterus. A scalpel and umbilical cord cl clamps or any alternative uh, ways of ligating the cord should be some something that's available on the, on the rest trolley, especially in a &E. So once um, you've dealt with a collapse, you want to document everything, you want to fill in an incident form out, so the care can be reviewed at a clinical governance meeting uh, and an all maternal death should be reported to the Embrace UK. Well, that's it. That's your really long guideline summarised in about 13 minutes. I hope you found this useful. I thought these were the most salient points from the guideline, and that's what I've shared with you. And as I said, this is what I used for my revision, and I hope this will help you with your revision. Good luck revising. And do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I will be sharing more and more of this kind of useful content and comment um, on, on, under this video if you found this video useful.